Hello everyone, uh, my name is Eduardo and today we're going to be talking about GitLab and MLflow. Uh, if, if you follow my updates, I've been talking about MLflow for a while and I'm going to start working on, on an integration and I think it's important to take a little bit of time to talk about what, why and how we are doing this integration. First of all, what is MLflow? MLflow is a model registry. Model registry is a component on the MLflow MLops stack. Uh, responsible for managing uh, the model, uh, mo the machine learning models that we create. So what is available uh, in production or not, uh, the list, uh, search, build upon, all the things that you usually do with a registry, the same that you do with a Docker registry. Uh, it's a very common, uh, it's a very uh, popular open source project. Um, and yeah, but more important than what it is, is what does it enable teams to do. First of all, track experiments. When we create machine learning models, uh, a big a important part of this is hyperparameter tuning. Uh, we create a code, but the parameters that we pass to the code can make a lot of difference uh, on, uh, on the output. So what we do is we create an experiment where we run this training multiple times and uh, with different parameters. What MLflow does, what MLflow makes it easy to do is given all of these runs that you just had, uh, makes it easy to compare and explore your hyperparameter space. So, for example, here I can compare the, these two hyperparameters on one or more uh, uh, different metrics that I'm interested on, uh, and that makes it a lot easier. Having these uh, runs, the next thing that it makes a lot easier to do is create a model. So you can registry, registry, uh, register a model uh, with MLflow and promote a run to a model, to a version of a model. So then you can track uh, which version is available on staging, on develop, on production. You can search, you can roll back uh, all those uh, classic uh, necessary things to do with, uh, with uh, packages. And having that model, then it becomes really, and since this model is MLflow packages is kind of like a, a pattern or a, a cask. So it makes it really easy to create a uh, server that will create predictions for uh, your model. And it makes it really easy to deploy. So MLflow already has a lot of functionality for this, um, both to serve this, but also to deploy machine learning models in, uh, to SageMaker and to Azure, not to GCP yet, but it makes it really easy to go through the entire flow of creating, testing and deploying your, managing and deploying your machine learning models. That's pretty cool, but why integrating with GitLab? First of all, users seem to really want it. So we ran some small uh, uh, surveys to check the temperature on this and see what users wanted. And MLflow features came consistently as the most voted. These are small sample sizes, but it g does give an idea of what we're looking at here. So users are very excited about this apparently. Second, it makes sense with the DevOps platform. So from what I spoke a little bit earlier, MLflow or model registry in itself, that just create, verify, package, release, monitor. It really involves a lot of DevOps in itself. So it makes sense to be part of the DevOps platform. And third, it's not, GitLab can actually make MLflow easier. If you go through the issues open on MLflow, you're gonna see that a lot of the things that are mentioned over there, GitLab can help with. For example, the biggest pain point, the most voted issue, and something that comes every time I speak to a user about MLflow is authentication and permissions and user support. MLflow doesn't do any of it. And GitLab could provide this through Git, GitLab own permission system. And there are many instances of where this can happen. And how we will uh, work on this. So the three underlying guidelines that we have in mind is first, self-managed, it should work for self-managed. Uh, it's not only for GitLab.com. This is also for users that deploy uh, behind uh, their own servers. So it's self-managed first. Second uh, point, it should just work. This shouldn't be, the whole point is to make MLflow deployment easier and along with GitLab. So we want this 
should be a zero overhead for users. You install GitLab and you have MLflow. And three, we want this to be more than just providing an MLflow instance. We want this, we want to want make MLflow better by being part of GitLab. Uh, we want to make MLflow easier to install, easier to use, easier to manage, but also we want to make GitLab better by having MLflow uh, integrated. So when to surface the right information, uh, for example, how can I use MLflow at code review? How can I use MLflow? Uh, what information can I show from MLflow on the commit page of a model or so on and so forth? Uh, so there are many places where we can uh, where we can help with this. Uh, it's a mutual uh, gain thing. Um, and the plan. So this is how we start. The first milestone that I'm looking at here is install MLflow as a component on GitLab uh, installation. So when you install uh, GitLab or your GDK instance, you also, the same way we have a component for GitLab, a GitLab or whatnot, you have a component for MLflow. It is installed together. Second milestone, authentication through piggybacking on projects. So when you open a project, it will have your own MLflow. Uh, each project has its own MLflow uh, installation and authentication is based on the project. So you get this for free. And second, uh, you also have to configure where um, where, where artifacts are stored for MLflow, we can use GitLab storage for this. And this is the first part, installation. The second part is usage. Uh, how do users actually use? So you can act the first milestone for usage, you can open uh, MLflow UI through gitlab.com slash my project slash MLflow. So you're going to have the UI that I showed before. Second milestone, uh, well, the same milestone actually is each project has its own tracking server. So it's gitlab.com slash myproject.mlflow that would be passed when you're creating the model so that you can track the runs. It, it's sent to GitLab. And over time, at the beginning, the first milestone is to use MLflow UI, but we want over time to rely less and less and less on the MLflow UI and migrate all the information into the GitLab uh, UI. So use MLflow as a backend for this, but the front end will be uh, GitLab. And that's what I had. So uh, if you have any feedback, this is the link. I uh, can, uh, for the Epic of for MLflow, uh, I'm accepting any ideas, any opinions, any, I don't know, whatever you want to say. Um, it's very early. And of course, this is incubation engineering. This is an exploration that we are doing. Uh, we want to explore if this is viable or not. This is not really a promise, but just sharing my vision for this. Thank you for watching and have a great day.